you know, you learn this as a clinical psychologist, and you know this generally, you know, unless you're an extraordinarily fortunate person. Um, you don't have to talk to someone for very long, and, and really talk to them, and get beneath the surface until you find, you know, there's a tragedy or two or three or ten lurking not very far beneath the surface. Someone in the family is very ill, there's a childhood history of extreme pathology, alcoholism somewhere in the family, maybe a touch of insanity, someone has cancer, you know, someone, some an older relative is dying, there's financial trouble, there's economic trouble, there's marital trouble, it's like life is trouble. And now, you know, it, it, that doesn't mean it's all trouble, but man, it's trouble, and sometimes it's, it's a lot of trouble. And sometimes it's so much trouble that you can you can barely stand it, and, and you see that because people, you know, people get depressed and they commit suicide, and the reason they do that is because they think not being is better than being, and that's quite the decision, you know? So, and, and it's not that uncommon among people who are depressed, and so it's, it's, a, it's, a, very, it's a very important thing to consider, and it, and it isn't just a matter of depression and suicide, that's bad enough, but, you know, if you're unhappy, because your suffering has pushed you past the point of your ability to cope, then there's all sorts of other things that can happen to you that aren't directed towards you. You can become cynical, and you can become bitter, and you can become cruel, and you can become narcissistic, and deceitful, and arrogant, and, and it's like everything's for you, and then you're out for revenge. That's a nice one. I don't know against who, but maybe everyone. Maybe even including you, because you're not happy about the role you've played in generating your own misery. I mean, there's a lot of darkness underneath the suffering, and so, and, and, and that's, that's an ever-present existential danger for human beings, you know? We're aware of the future, we're aware of our fragility, we're aware of our mortality. It's something that makes us truly unique, truly conscious in a way that no other creature is, and capable of things that no other creature can do, but also bearing an unbelievably heavy existential load. We're the only creatures that have to always contend with the fact that we're finite, and that everyone we know is in the same position, that allied with the suffering. And so that's there all the time. And, and you know, even, even in, in the brightest moments, in some sense, you know, in, in, in Renaissance paintings, in, in still lifes, they used to put a memento, a memento mori often in the, in the still life, like a skull somewhere in the corner, or sometimes, sometimes in, a, in, in a very strange perspective, so that you could only see the skull if you were standing, like right beside the painting, instead of dead on. But the idea was to always remember, you know, that everything that exists is tainted or touched with the, with the with the, with, the, with the taint of mortality. And, you know, that's rough, but there, there's some useful things in it. It keeps you awake, and it, it keeps you focused if you're careful. But it also does indicate to you, if you think about it, the necessity of having a meaning in your life. 